Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming and in this video I'm going to give you the top three army combinations that new players should consider working on in Age of Empires Mobile. And with three heroes per combination and so many different heroes you can choose from, there is a lot to think about. So we're going to structure this video as follows. At the start of the video, I'm going to give you some generic advice about investing in heroes in Age of Empires Mobile. From there, we're going to go into the different combinations of heroes and the top three combinations I've got for you today. And then we're going to do an in-depth-ish breakdown of the skills you would choose on each hero. And you shouldn't take my word for it. These combinations come from the professor who can spend literally over an hour breaking down each combination and explaining the intricacies of why they all work together. And he has spent months playing the game in its beta pre-global launch state in order to bring this information today. So I'm hyped to be doing this collaboration with the professor who's actually here with us in voice. Hey man, how are you? And thanks for the intel to make this vid. Hello there, thank you very much for inviting me. This is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I think this is going to be a really important video for a lot of people. And I'll try to just give the advice really quickly, but you could always use the timestamps, jump to whatever you want, consider subscribing. This easily could have been like a three hour video. We're going to make this, we're going to challenge ourselves to get this into like 20 minutes. The first thing you need to know is that although the game will offer you potentially many epic heroes, the epic heroes are not nearly as good as the legendary ones. You should just focus on the legendary heroes. And according to the professor, the epics just don't have have big enough numbers to hang. You also don't want to build the wrong hero and then keep switching from one to another, spending critical resources on a hero that isn't actually a part of a plan, which is why I've got three plans prepared by the professor in very in-depth curated to present to you in this video. So you're going to pick a project, you're going to stick with that project, and we'll give you a couple options here. And another thing that is really important, foundational knowledge to building hero combinations in this game is that there is a military specialty, all right? So you must pair heroes that have the same military specialty, three of them together, because you just get a massive boost to stats, as it says on screen, you can see, um, for having three heroes with the same specialty in your army. Now, initially, you'll only be able to have one hero in your army as you get your uh, Citadel higher level you'll eventually be able to do two and then eventually three. So if you go to your town center and you go to upgrade, you hit the info section, you can see the number of hero slots happens at 17. You get to plus two hero slots. Um, and before that, at 12, you get plus one. So you get your second hero slot per army at 12. You get your third hero slot per army at 17, right? So you ideally end up focusing on one army if you're free to play. If you're a low spender to mid spender, you might have your one main army and a side project. And if you're a high to very high spender, maybe you're working on three army combinations at a time. But for the most part, everybody should be focusing on at least one combination that's really, really good. And if you're wondering, Chisco, what is this account you're showing? This is not very leveled up. Yes, this is an account I made in the pre-global launch state of the game. As of the time of this recording, the game hasn't gone live, but it will be going live tomorrow. And my group does a huge start, including the professor. He'll be joining us yep. on 1120. You hyped for that, man? Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really curious to see what kind of Super Bowl arena feel I can get out of this one here, because it's going to be well hyped. Dude, it is going to be such a hype server. We're competing against against other major content creators. This is gonna, this is going to be huge. There's $10,000 in prizes. I'll have a link to that down below. Pretty you sure can join I'm us. Get that. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> we got to get that bag, baby. We'll see. We'll see. Of course, we just give all this knowledge away, but uh, whatever, whatever. People would have figured it yeah, out. Be known for something. Yeah, people would have figured it out somewhere. All right. So as I was describing, you use three heroes. Make sure you have the same specialty. So Josephine is a warrior. Harold is a warrior. And Joan of Arc is a warrior. So three warriors, if you put them together, that is very important. To give an example of a non-warrior, I actually need to end up scrolling down here to show some other types, but like Justinian is a tactician. You don't want to mix a warrior and a tactician, not unless you really know what you're doing. Um, there are other types. There's marshals as well. I mean, there are a bunch of these different synergies you need to get right. There it is, marshals, okay? So you'd want only marshals if you have marshals. The other synergy you're going for is your troop type synergy. So you're going to have your military specialty, three heroes from the same specialty, and three heroes that value the same troop type. 
So the specialty of the hero, as you can see, is in the upper right, and having more heroes that value the same specialty gives you more bonuses. Now, theoretically, you can break these rules to make combos that do specific things once you really know what you're doing, which is probably what the professor will be doing in breakdowns on his YouTube channel. <laughs> but for the sake of starting out and for the way 90% of people, maybe 99 at the start of the game should be thinking about the game, just go with three in the same military specialty, three for the same troop type. All right. Yep, that's good. You can mix, but you're losing 50% stats on each. It just never is worth it. Just, yeah. just don't do it. Yep. One final piece of advice, because there's so many ways to power up heroes that like we're going to have to cover them in other videos, like talents, gear, gems, etc. But one of the main things you will do is you will power up skills. Each hero has three skills, um, well, three different types of skill slots, I should say, four skills available. And the first type of skill, you can see all the way on the left, it's the commander skill. Only the primary commander in your army, the first one you bring in your combination of three, uses their commander skill. The second skill is called a signature skill. This is always with your hero, whether they're the first hero, the second hero, or the third hero, in the combination you bring out of your city. This is an important one. You cannot change out what this is. The next two skills are actually customizable, okay? And at the end of the video, we'll talk about what those customizable skills should be in each of these combinations. And the professor is challenging himself for the sake of brevity to smash through these recommendations really quickly <laughs> once we I get to that point. I'll try. Yeah, without, um, you know, <laughs> we're going to try to make this a quicker video. Okay, so with that said, the three combos that you might consider making, they're going to either be the... Warrior Swordsmen, the Warrior Pikemen, or the Warrior Archers. So we're going to start with Warrior Swordsmen. So I'm going to put that filter on now. Warrior and Swordsmen confirm. And we're going to start with a free-to-play friendly combination. This free-to-play friendly combination is going to include Hammurabi. Uh, Tribuana. These are heroes I have not unlocked on this account, but on my main, we're going to be cooking, all right? And if you're free-to-play, King Derek. And just to be clear, it actually needs to be Hammurabi as the commander, the first hero, then Tribuana, then King Derek, if you're doing the free-to-play warrior swordsman. Now, the reason we've chosen these heroes is in part because of how you can get them. If you're free-to-play, and if you're spending, you're going to max King Derek because he comes from a Giant's Roar event. This is all about participation. You can take him to the highest star level, five stars, and everybody should be doing that. So, hey, one hero in the combo... Locked up. So this means if you're free to play for Warrior Swordsman, you'd go with Hammurabi, Tribuana, and King Derek as the third. The next hero in the combo, as I mentioned, is Tribuana. Tribuana comes from what's called the Legendary Advent. This is the equivalent of Wheel of Fortune if you're from Rise of Kingdoms, Lucky Spins if you're from Call of Dragons, um, and you're subscribed to my audience for that. But the um, Lucky Advent or Lucky Spins, it actually, oh, here it is. Good. This is what it looks like, okay? You can do it for free, but importantly, getting to specific tiers of this gets you extra rewards, all right? And even if you're free to play, you can unlock a hero from this. You need to save up your empire coins that you're earning free to play so that when Tribuana shows up, you can get her. And she is potentially in the second or third time that you will see the Legendary Advent event. Now, Hammurabi is in this combo, not because he's the best you can do for Warrior Swordsmen, but because if you're free to play, good news, you can recruit him from this portion over here, the Legendary Arrival. You can see he is in the prize pool, all right? So that is why we've chosen this specific combination of heroes if you are free to play. Now, if you are a spender, then what you're going to do is slightly different because you're going to be able to get Miyamoto, who is extremely powerful, from VIP. So spenders will be doing Miyamoto, Tribuana, who, as I mentioned, is from the Legendary Advent, and then King Derek, who you get completely free to play. Now, you will actually, if you are a spender, look to relatively quickly upgrade from King Derek. And the upgrade you're looking to make, if I go back to Warrior Swordsman over here, um, is going to be Yodid. So Yodid is over here. Uh, she is available from the Legendary Advent, and she comes 
later on, all right? So that is what you're going to do if you're going for Warrior Swordsman. My game plan, by the way, is going to be that sort of more pay-to-win game plan. Try to max Miyamoto from VIP, Tribuana, and then swing into Yoded in the meantime using King Derek. Warrior Swordsman, everybody. The goal of Warrior Swordsman is to be a combo attack army. By the way, in case you're wondering, why do these combos work? This is a combo attack army where the heroes are boosting each other for super powerful attacks, and you get just super powerful punch, potentially from your very first hit. This is arguably one of the most popular routes to go. I probably should have started with this when I was selling Warrior Swordsman. So now we're going to go to the second type, the Warrior Pikemen. And I'll tell you what they're good for up front, okay? The Warrior Pikemen are all about counterattacking like crazy. If a bunch of people want to hit you, great. They're all going to get wrecked for it. This is arguably one of the strongest army combinations you can make in the current meta, and they just have unbelievable counterattack synergy. So if you are going to go this route, there are two heroes you might consider to be the primary hero for your army configuration. Okay, and when I say the primary hero, just to like really align here, when we go to the world here and I tap the map and I'll say march, okay, you can see when I set up armies, the very first hero is that primary hero, all right? When I was talking about those troop bonuses for the troop type, um, when I was talking about the military specialty, this is where you're going to see those bonuses line up. And it is worth mentioning, the military specialty only becomes available once I think you hit hero level 35 on uh, the hero that you're putting into the combo. You'll need all of them to be 35 to benefit from that. Ooh, there's, there's a lot to learn and know in this game, but we are getting there. All right, so from here, let's jump back onto this hero screen. And the, the primary hero you're going to use is either going to be Leonidas or you're going to use Richard. All right, so here's Leonidas, here's Richard. Whichever one you have at a higher star level is likely to perform better for you as the primary. Richard is available from the Legendary Advent, and he's one of the more popular heroes in the game simply because he's so good in this combo. And Leonidas is available from a bundle. In this bundle, you're either going with Leonidas or you're going with Mulan and you're making a choice. So I personally plan to go for Leonidas. I plan to use him probably as the primary because I'm going to get a star level really high and Richard as the secondary from the legendary advent. The third hero that's going to go into this combo is your boy Freddy, the guy I'm on a first name basis with here, okay? Now, Freddy is actually available from the daily special offer, the daily special. So if you wanted to get him from here, it would take a small amount of spending. We can switch out, as you can see, to Freddy. And my game plan is to get him to like unlock and one star from here, because in the not too distant future, I will replace Freddy. And I will replace uh, Freddy with a advent hero, and that is Boudicca. So short term game plan, Leonidas, Richard, and then Freddy. Long-term game plan, swap out the Freddy, bring in the Boudicca. Crazy counterattack, really powerful. Theoretically, you could, if you were free to play, look to Joan and Darius the Great as alternatives, um, but I don't think they're very good, and the professor has said they are many tiers below. Uh, the Warrior Pikeman we've recommended here as being just the more, much more powerful way to go. Ooh. Now, there is one other way to maybe unlock Freddy, and it all depends on what shows up in the Legendary Advent. You might be able to get him free to play. The way the Legendary Advent used to work, and I'll put a picture of this on screen from the professor, is that when you reach certain tiers, you got different combinations of hero medals which is what you use to unlock and start up a hero. So it is theoretically possible, depending on the reward structure for the Legendary Advent, that you might be able to get him in the first Richard Legendary Advent as a reward for getting to 60 total spins. You would need to save up a lot of Empire Coins to pull that off, and I will point out that if I go back to the Legendary Advent we have now in a server that's much older, so who knows, you know, this is a, a pre-global launch server, but that reward tier, as I was describing, is not here with different hero medals represented at the uh, different slots for spins. So it may not be the case that you can do that anymore. So I don't know. This we'll see. It was literally two days ago. So what the ramifications of the change, whether you still can or you can't, unknown so far. The new version, of this this is a, 
brand spanking new version of this wheel. All right. Now this brings us to the third combination. Okay. And the third combination, by the way, here's the bundle where you're picking. Is it Leonidas or is it Mulan? And this bundle scales up and up and up. I believe as you buy it, getting more and more expensive. I don't know what the total price is to max these heroes from this bundle, but if you do know that number, please do leave a comment down below and I will update the pinned comment with that when I see it. But the third combo is warrior archers. And maybe professor, you can talk very briefly, like what is the synergy we're going for with warrior archers? Like for warrior pikemen, it's crazy counterattack. For our warrior swordsmen, it's super powerful combos. What is it for these archers? Just raw damage. If you go over to your barracks and go and grab the archers, look at the difference in attack power between the archer and any other unit, and that'll give you a good idea. With these archers here, it is all about raw skill damage. Guns blazing, hit it as fast as you can, as hard as you can, and either you die quick or I die quick. We don't know, but it won't be long. Okay, so I made my way to the barracks where I can train my archers, and uh, they just have a lot of attacks. So you're just saying raw punch is what their you're going for. Their skills and right? their base attack are both extremely high. Their defense is extremely low. They will hit really hard, but they won't last very long. Uh, Interesting. It's going to be a oh, yeah, I see the stats are definitely different here. Even without spending a bunch of time reviewing it, we'll take your word for it. People can go look at this on their own time. So if I go back to the hero screen, here is the combination you're going to go for if you build warrior archers, all right? Um, you're going to go Mulan, all right? You buy her from bundles, as I mentioned. And if you're free to play, you do have an option here. Instead, um, she's potentially about 70% as powerful, but you go with Josephine as the primary. Josephine is available... Uh, from, I believe, uh, let's see here, the tavern. Right from the very start, you literally start yeah. the game with her. So you start the game with her and she's available from the tavern, which is a huge win, all right? So if you want to take advantage of the fact that pretty much everybody, <laughs> literally everybody, is going to have some amount of investment in Josephine initially, you start there, um, you'd swap her out for Mulan if you have the Mulan available and you're, you're spending. Um, the second hero you go for in this combo is King Derek, who's going to be fully and completely free to play obtainable from this Giants Roar event at five stars. Um, and the third hero that you use, Tilla the Hunt, he is potentially the very first legendary advent that will show up as one of your options. So overall, in summary, we've given two good free to play options. Free to play option number one was Warrior Swordsman with King Derek, Tribuana, and Hammurabi. Option two was to go Josephine, King Derek, Attila, and you go Warrior Archer. Um, now, Professor, very briefly, do you think one or the other is better? The, the free-to-play Warrior Archers or the free-to-play um, Warrior Swordsman? Warrior Swordsman, you can get going immediately. It's going to be faster. It's still going to be powerful, strong, fun. Warrior Archers are slightly slower, but they also tend to do a lot better on events such as the Trojan Horse, which is all about a DPS check. So about even, I'd say, Warriors get a slight stronger in PvP. Okay, so, so the Swordsmen are stronger for PvP, you said, and the Archers yes. are slightly better for PvE, but they're both pretty close. Very close. Okay, cool. So you can go with what you'd like. <laughs> you can take that advice and go with what you'd like. Which brings us to the much more nuanced portion of the event, or the uh, the video, I should say, um, where we're going to go really in-depth. And by the way, I should summarize, if you are pay to win, right, for Warrior Swordsman, it's Miyamoto, Chiruana, Derek, into Yoded. And if it's Warrior Pikeman, Leonidas, Richard, Barbarossa, into Boudica later. Um, and if it's Warrior Archers, pay to win, Mulan, Attila, Derek. Okay, we got that out of the way, but now I, I did want to, in this video, very briefly, even though it's already 20 minutes, which is insane, very briefly cover the skills you would pick on some of these heroes. Um, and this is going to be a big challenge to you. All right, so this is going to be the speed breakdown of the skills you select if you're going with these different hero combinations. I have challenged the professor to move fast while also helping people understand like what is actually happening. I'm going to try to keep up, but it's pretty much ready, set, go to the professor to try to uh, bang this out as uh, efficiently as we can to help y'all out. All right, professor, you ready? You want to start I'm with ready. the free to play warrior swordsman. I'm on Hammurabi with his skills. Take it away, broski. So this is Hammurabi and his uh, signature skill applies the road effect. And it also increases the commander's damage, which is himself. That'll be important later on. So he does apply route. Now, over to his normal skills, you have three options. Earth Crush is just simply the, the skill that does the most damage. It's the best one. 
It also applies route, which is nice. Usually you will go with high spirit. That's this one here, which will increase your uh, signature skill chance of activating more often. If you want to save money, you can go with Sunder instead of high spirit. It will save you 8,000 coins. It'll still do good damage. And it also applies, has a chance of applying the route. Okay, got it. So Earth Crush High Spirit is the best way to go. But if you want to save on currency, swap out High Spirit for Sunder. Yes. Now, the, why all of this focus? It's because if you go for King David, um, his signature ability here increases your entire army's damage if the route effect is applied. So the more often, the more chances you apply the route effect, the more often this very powerful effect happens. And yeah, win all around. Which means his skill is also going to be Earth Crush. That's his most powerful skill. You can also go Sunder as his second one for more chances at route. This army is very, very important on trying to combo the route effect off of each other. If you don't want to go Sunder, you want to go something else, Righteous Judgment is a good alternative. Okay, got it. So Earth Crush, Sunder is good. And then Earth Crush, Righteous Judgment would also work. And you're keying off of this route effect which makes targets take more damage it's per a bleed second. Effect. Yeah, it's bleed. Okay, got it. I'm with you. And then you'll have Tribuana. And with her, it's a little bit different. Uh, she will make it so your commander activates very, very fast, rapidly. So with three extra attacks, a 100% chance to activate is very strong. So you're going to get extra effects of that. Her signature, or sorry, your secondary skills are not as crucial or significant they are a lot more um, defensive oriented. There are a couple you can go with either Fortification, Bloodthirst, Righteous Judgment, or King's Blade. A lot of debate on that one. However, the one that I found that being the strongest is Fortification and Bloodthirst. Fortification activates every time you heal, and Bloodthirst gives you that heal. It makes your army a lot more tankier and allows you to last longer in the battle, which usually results in more damage overall than that. Okay, got it. So this is another hero where you can potentially stick with one of the easy to obtain, in fact, by default, you get it skills that's fortification, and you can just pair with bloodthirst, and that's looking pretty good. Something really important to note with all these purple skills are not bad. There are certain epic skills that are worth their weight in gold. There's some that are even more powerful than legendary skills. So don't write it off just because it's free. Okay, got some it. of them are bad, but some are very powerful. And these legendary skills are only available once you hit certain levels. It looks like it's 56. Other skills here looks like these are available at 25 and 38 for these additional skill slots. So these aren't going to be available to you right away in your first army anyway. So you can keep that in mind. And there's a bunch of ways to power these up, which like this is going to be a three hour video. If we talk about all that, we'll cover it. We'll cover that one for you in another video. So let's go to the pay to win version of the warrior swordsman where we've got King Derek and Tribuana, we've already kind of covered what they're doing, but you would bring in Miyamoto instead, which is what I plan to do, by the way. So Miyamoto is actually probably the strongest hero in the entire game. He is very, very powerful, so it's very well worth investing into him, especially if you're playing Swordsman. His signature skill does damage, which is nice, but then also has a 50% chance of activating your next strongest hero's damage as well, for potentially double the effect. So anything that increases your damage or anything that increases your activation chance is really, really high value. Therefore, with his customizable skills, Furious Charge, another one of the highest value skills in the game, is very, very powerful. It makes you hit a lot harder. And High Spirit, which allows you to your signature to activate more often and cycle more often. Now, here's the thing. If you're going to put skills in, put them equally into or put them into Furious Charge and max that first. Okay, got it. So, and that's because every time your hero activates their signature skill, you increase your might damage and you're gaining stacks of that. And he's all about activating signature skills and just like boom, 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 big damage, even from the very first turn is what you had sort of described, right? Yes. And if you're using Tribuana, he makes your signature skill activate really, really quickly with nearly 100% accuracy. Turns out to be a lot of damage when they combo off like that. Sick. And eventually you swap into Yotid or um Yodit. so if we're going to Yodit, very briefly what skills would you put onto her so Yodit has two things to consider the first is that her skill her signature skill has a damage immunity for one second if you put this hero at the very end last the next damage that is going to be immune will be during the enemy's commander which is going to prevent or potentially prevent you a lot of damage her positioning is important 
The other thing is that she has equal might with Tribiana, and Mayamoto will only increase your highest one. So you have to make sure she has more stars than Tribiana. As for her skills, uh, you want to go with Executor, which gives you increased activation chance. It's nice. But a whopping, at max level, 80% skill damage increase. It's one of the highest in the games. Very, very huge. So that's one that you want to put a lot of focus on. And the other one is Furious Charge, another one of that very powerful skill. At the end of it, you're just going to be, have huge damage multipliers, and Mayamoto is going to make you activate so very often. Okay, awesome. I know we can spend a lot of time on this, but let's jump to the Warrior Pikemen, all right? And I'll change my filter over here, but let's start with Leonidas, under the assumption that you're going to kind of go the route of uh, buying your way into him and getting him to a high star level. What uh, should we be doing with ya boy Leo over here? Pikemen have an interesting thing in that if it's good enough to do once, it's good enough to do three times. Richard, uh, Leonidas, and Boudica have almost identical skills that you want to take. It's literally just double the ones all the way up. So I can explain them all. In all three, you want Whirlwind Sweep, which is the same thing as Furious Charge, just over time instead. But it'll stack up and give you huge amounts of damage. All three heroes want that. Then the other one they want is Forceful Retaliation, or... Oh, I forgot the name of the other one. Do you mean Fearless Retribution? There's two of them. Fearless Retribution and for Forceful Retaliation. If you go to Richard, he has both, so you can see him there. Okay, he's got that one. Got it. Leonidas they didn't have it. Have, yeah, they'll have one or the other. Richard has both. Got it. So they both have a second way to do counterattack damage and very valuable. Um, of the two, Forceful Retaliation is the better because it gives you more might equals more damage. Other than that, though, those two combos with all three. Okay, got it. And does that also apply to Freddy? Does he also nope. have that uh, option available Freddy to him? is very, very different. Frederick is all about tanking and making you last as long as possible. He has one of the most powerful defensive abilities in the game as a signature where he just gets huge damage reduction. You want to make that better by going into his skills and taking Peaceful Haven. This will give you more damage reduction. However, you need to activate heals for this ability. So even though it's a purple skill, metal becomes top choice. It gives you the most peaceful, peaceful Haven stacks as it activates once every six seconds. Got and, it. Yeah. And even though I plan to replace him with Boudica later, it's worth at least unlocking Peaceful Haven, but maybe not it investing in it too much does that sound right it is strong it depends on how much uh you're going to spend if you're going to replace them you don't want to war drums has a similar effect just not as powerful as peaceful haven it gives you armor instead of damage reduction it's sufficient on its own to have two purple skills in this one okay got it so depending on how many projects i'm running at once i could consider just sticking with the purple skills on him because the game plan is replace freddy for Boudica. gg okay Let's talk archers. So the first one here is Josephine, and she's a little different. She does damage and heals at the same time. So her signature skill is going to be a mixture of damage and healing, which will make you last longer. Her skills, though, you want to give her is going to be weak spot attack and double attack. Weak spot attack is one of the strongest um, of this type of skill, straight damage dealing ones, because it deals more damage the more uh, damage you deal. Um, if you have higher might, it deals more damage. Double attack gives you more chances to activate it. Okay, and if you're using Mulan, what would you go for there? Mulan goes a little bit differently in the fact that she just does a lot more skill damage. So for her, Furious Charge, which is one of those really powerful skills again, is going to be the one you want. You can have the option of going double attack or weak spot attack. Now, of these two, weak spot attack is a lot more powerful because it increases your hero damage, like Furious Charge does, when you deal damage. And that will make your signature skill do a whole lot more. Okay, got it. So Furious Charge, Weak Spot is the preference. You could do Double Attack, but probably just Weak Spot. Okay, I'm with you there. So we've covered the... One more thing, sorry. If you're putting yeah. Stars on there and Mulan, put them in Weak Spot Attack to make that as powerful as possible. Okay, got it. So if you are going to spend the money, you said put it on the Weak Spot Attack to make her as powerful as possible. And she'd be worth it, yes. Very worth got it. Got it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So let's talk about the other two heroes in the combo. Your advent hero is Attila the Hun. So Attila the Hun is a fun one. He has abilities that increase, um, like the, the buffing skills for someone next. His warrior's hymn is one of the most important ones. 
This one increases your um, hero's might and critical strike chance, but only for the next hero. So Attila has to be third. So the next hero who gets it is Joseph. Or sorry, is either Josephine or Mulan. You don't want to be giving King Derek extra crit chance. So it has mm. to be last. The other one is weak spot attack again. That's the one you would go for. Okay, so weak spot attack, and you said it was warriors him. Warriors which him. increases the next hero's might. By a portion, which and that increases the crit, critical strike rate. Okay, got it. And if you're doing these heroes, the order of the combo is actually Mulan, King Derek, then Attila. So they yes, be correct. Okay, and that that's just a function of Attila's signature skill, not just the customizable skills, right? A lot of them, it doesn't matter. Some of them is incredibly important. Yodit and Attila, it's incredibly important. All right, and then King Derek, who we're doing second in this particular combo. Um, exact same what's... as he was before. Earth Crush and Sunder. He doesn't change. He's just a really powerful hero that works in many places. All right, so that's the top three combos as determined by the professor for your start in Age of Empires Mobile. Whether you're going with the warrior swordsman, the warrior pikeman, or the warrior archers, we've tried to come up with some different ways to weave in free-to-play options. And I think, again, best way to do that is in either the swordsman or or the archers. And you might be wondering, but wait, you mentioned swordsmen, archers, pikemen, where are the cavalry, Cheskul? Well, you know, what the professor and I were talking about is the fact that there's not really a great way to run calves until you get Lubu. And until that time, it's not amazing. And we don't know exactly when he's going to show up in the legendary advent because he was sort of a late-ish addition in the pre-global launch servers. So he likely comes later on. So there are some really cool ways to go run cavalry, especially with Lubu. And there are some other combinations as well. But we'll have to cover that in separate videos because this is way too long. And if you're looking for more detailed information about any of these combinations or any of these heroes, go check out the professor's channel. I'll have it linked in the description and the pinned comment. Also consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to build several of these combos and you'll see them in action. It should be a really good time. And if you're looking for more basic information about the game, like what's the best civilization to use, check the card in the end screen. It'll be right over here. That'll give you a really good start in the game.